Namaste. My guest today is Professor Vaidyanathan from IIM Bangalore. We have done many of these uh, discussions before, so he's no stranger to you. Uh, uh, welcome to this, Professor Vaidyanathan. Namaste. Thank you very much, uh, Rajiv. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And whenever you visit India, I have the opportunity to meet with you. It's my pleasure. I recall actually in one of those wintry mornings in 1990, early 90s, I think, I visited you at uh, Boston uh, nearby with, uh, you know, with, it was so cold, it was freezing cold, but you were uh, very, very kind enough to accommodate me. And we had a long, long discussion at that time. Yes. And uh, from that, I am very glad that Infinity Foundation has grown into a very large banyan tree, I think. And it has also got a huge amount of uh, not only followers, but uh, people who are planning to take up the task which you are uh, dedicated your life. I think I am very, very happy about that actually. And you are one of the main trunks of this tree <laughs> because the tree is supported by many trunks. Yeah, yeah. Plenty. So, so I am very uh, glad. Not a main trunk. I am one of those small no, you know, no, okay. <laughs> branches. So, so, I want to start yeah. with a provocative question yes. about the Indian economy. Yes. Obviously, it affects everybody. Correct. And uh, there is a lot of controversy. Some people saying this good and that good. But you are an expert. So, give us a bird's eye view and then we will go deeper. What do you think of the Indian economy today? See, economy incidentally is uh, uh, extremely interesting that we are number three in the world today in terms of purchasing power parity. First is China to start with and then US and then India. And uh, we are a very, very large economy. And uh, in, <laughs> one can lightheartedly say it is uh, growing significantly and also very large uh, segments of it are going, uh, not due to government, in spite of government. We always tend to, you know, associate a huge amount of, uh, you know, any growth taking place in economy, it is due to government. And any, you know, decline, it is, actually our society is much, much larger. Our government role is definitely there. It is much more, it can be an obstructive look rather than an accelerating role. So, how much of the economy is this very big, well-known, famous Sensex companies versus the non-Sensex economy? Oh gosh, this, this uh, you know, we, we are very obsessed with this Sensex and yes. Nifty. They may constitute, Sensex itself, that 30 companies, they may constitute in GDP hardly 5 to 6 percent. Okay. We are primarily a partnership proprietorship economy, what I call India unincorporated. We are huge entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, small entrepreneurs and they are the ones who are actually the uh, engines of growth. You see, in our economy, if you take, agriculture may constitute something like 18 percent. So, let us look at agriculture, yeah. the, the farmer suicides, uh, water shortages. Uh, what is the state of the agriculture economy? Agriculture, actually, you know, I may be looking as some, you know, funny fellow or contrary, it is doing very well, actually. The farmer suicide and other thing is there, it is not, but let us be very clear, not all farmer suicide is due to uh, problems associated with this uh, borrowing or agriculture or anything. You know, one shouldn't say that, but uh, if you have a severe stomach problem or a problem with your spouse and you commit suicide, if you are a farmer, it immediately is told that it's a farmer suicide. But the economic related suicide? That they are relatively, I would say, in, in, in relation to our size and uh, proportion, it's very, very relatively very small. So, what about the chemical infestation in the farm today because this green revolution meant that we put in we were went after quantitative growth of the produce and not worried about the health implications yeah. of putting so much chemical yeah. so there's very little organic farming a whole lot of chemical farming so what do you think of that no problem? but last i think uh, rajiv we have to recognize last five years definitely or last 10 years even there is a significant amount of awareness about it yes in many parts of the country yes farmers are uh, what one can call much more prudently using chemicals and much, much more uh, actively getting involved with the natural thing. It's a very long drawn out affair. Yeah, one uh, of the persons I work with is uh, Vandana Shiva, yeah. who is a very famous, well known yes, person. Yes, I've known yes. her for 20, yes, 30 years. I'm going yes. to interview her also yeah. and get her views on this whole thing. Right. And you know, there's also a whole uh, poisoning of the, the cows. We brought in the Jersey cow. 
and the Vedic cow, the, the traditional Indian cow is very t small portion of the Indian uh, yes. you know, thing. Uh, so, and everybody from mother dairy to Amul and all that, we are there actually not using the traditional Indian cow. So, the and the use of hormones and chemicals to boost yeah. the economy of the uh, milk, that's also an issue. Yes, but you see, I think you will agree with me, there is a lead lag in all these things. You know, when uh, entire Europe and US were uh, smoking, you know, the youngsters in the 70s, in India also everybody was smoking. Mm. They gave it up completely and significant reduction in the tobacco consumption. And slowly after 10-15 years, we are also, uh, you know, uh, there is a decline in terms of… So, uh, it's very interesting. We follow their bad habits. Very quickly. And when they pick up our good habits and become more Vedic, more, yes, vegi yes. more vegetarian, yes. giving up smoking, Correct. Uh, going back to chemical free, uh, they are taking our habits to improve and clean up. Then it takes us 10 years to copy that also. Yeah, it's that's a lead lag, I'm <laughs> sure. So, they are having uh, reducing consumption of uh, this chemical and uh, organic farming. And I'm sure it will, you know, it will come. Like, you know, when they start uh, yoga 10 years before, here also everybody started interested. Exactly. So, this will, you know, like, uh, uh, like this bad cow disease significantly altered their perception about uh, this uh, beef eating. Beef and, uh, eating beef particularly eating. in Britain, where right, right. they were feeding the cows with the cow bones. So, cannibals, actually. making them cannibals. Can yes, yeah. very. Yeah. But now, substantial portion is realizing what they have done is rubbish, yeah. actually. So, what do you think of, now moving from the uh, agriculture, what do you think of the make in India? You see, uh, I, I was just mentioning that agriculture may constitute around 18 percent, okay. manufacturing may constitute around, uh, you know, 18, 19 percent. The huge chunk of our economy, two third is roughly, is the services. They are actually, services mean everybody thinks of Narayan Murthy, obviously, but uh, that's a relatively a small portion. The service also is the taxi driver. Yes. And the waiter. The major service industry in India is construction. Okay. Then we have the uh, non-railway transport, trade, wholesale and retail trade. Then you have restaurant and uh, we also have other, you know, plumber, fitter, carpenter and all type of services, real estate and these are the major services. And uh, of that, uh, trade is one of the large services actually. Trade is more than manufacturing in India. It is roughly 17% of our national income. So, do you think that… Uh, they are uh, growing very but, fast. But, but do you think that uh, Amazon and uh, Flipkart owned by Walmart are taking over that business? That's not… Uh, go they are attempting. For instance, uh, uh, the KFC has been attempting to be… See, two areas which are fast growing in India, or rather three areas are trade, retail trade, uh, restaurants and uh, non-railway transport. And in all the three areas, the global companies want to enter. In the trade, what you rightly mentioned, Amazon and uh, this uh, Walmart and other. In restaurant, KFC and uh, McDonald and other. In uh, non-railway, uh, you know, in that, uh, your Greyhound and so many want to enter. But that's not going to be very easy. The fastest growing sectors are these three. They have been growing around 8 to 9 percent real growth rate. Hmm. Annually. Inflationary adjusted. Inflationary adjusted growth rate. Right. Fastest growing That's very actually. impressive. Very, very impressive. And most of them, why most, almost all of them are partnership and proprietorship firms. They are run by, you know, small family and other. And they are the engines of our economic growth. But as families hmm. are falling apart, which is sad, do you think there is an economic effect of that? Sure, because not uh, again of course, maybe in the next uh, uh, f you know, 10 years we will feel the impact of it because in Europe families are significantly declining. There are practically no families at all in many European countries Correct. because what we uh, call uh, families have been nationalist. Right. The government has taken over the responsibility of the families in many of the northern European countries. If you are old age in India, your family is supposed to help you. Yeah. But in Europe, it will be, you know, the government will take care. If 50% of the births in uh, Europe today are outside wedlock. Yeah. Same in US also. Yeah. So, so, family role is becoming less and less. And I that has an economic you. effect? It will have definitely an economic effect. Because you know, the assumption can't be made that there is an, a passing of the, passing the business to the next generation. Yes. And the next generation may not want it. But more than one more dimension in India is, next to family there is a caste. 
which is also a very closely knit and that's also falling form. apart that's uh, i would not say it's falling apart okay. actually okay. it's only getting consolidated for instant i was going through the literature uh, you believe me there are something like uh, uh, 200 plus uh, subcast under jats i see <laughs> and there are 97 subcast under linkayat okay now all of them are calling themselves linkayat or jats so they will become super jatis. Yes, that is the thing. It's a consolidation or aggregation is taking place because of democracy. You know, in terms of vote bank. Vote bank that's so, all. So you need a critical mass to be powerful. Correct. But the services sector, let us come back to economics, it's growing very fast. The way in which it is growing. So these services are related to jatis. In a sense, yes. We will perhaps have a separate uh, discussion on this itself. Okay. Cost as social capital. Right. That's a separate issue. Right. But the point I want to stress is our economy is uh, growing, you know, plus or minus people began to argue 6.7%, 7% and 7.2%. Whatever it is, it's one of the fastest growing in the world today actually. So how about the fact that now there's about 20 million people every year that are reaching the age of uh, jobs? <laughs> yeah but not that many uh, jobs being created. So, uh, what do you think Again, you see, there is a fallacy in India. Everybody thinks government should create jobs. According to me, government should be a facilitator only. But if you forget, ignore But it. huge number of jobs are getting created and people are getting employed, not captured by our data. Okay. Right? For instance, in a place like Bangalore or Chennai today, if you want a plumber, carpenter or electrician, you don't get a person from Kanadiga or uh, Tamilian. You get people from Orissa, Bihar and uh, uh, northeastern states even. Some are from Bengal. If I want to get a good plumber, actually there is a, I was told that something like 50% of the plumber in India come from a single district called Kendrapara in uh, Orissa. <laughs> they are all spreading all over the place. Cooks, for instance, you don't get a traditional uh, Kanadiga cook here. Yeah. Uh, they are all. So, these are not captured in the data. Many of the... My, it's a for of instance, in, it's a, it's an informal economy. Maybe. In for, you may call it informal, but they are as much organized and as much formal. Actually. They are organized? Among amongst themselves, themselves yeah. but not government recognized. Correct. Or captured in the database. Right. Some of the, you know, they are not uh, very poor or anything. My plumber for a visit, he charges 600 rupees. Yeah. As good as my doctor actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually he, he is better earning than a urologist, I will say, who is also plumbing for it's, it's the different kind of leaks plumber. actually. You want. Right. But this, uh, these people are not earning any less. My cook is having, let me be clear, six houses he is cooking and in each house he earns between four to five thousand rupees per month that's pretty good yeah he is of course he is completely occupied and other thing but this is a good thing because this means that there is dignity of labor enormously so, so, so it is not that those who are learned and literate and college educated are going to become richer no. and everybody else is poor no that old idea of india that the, the, changing. the is changing not only that you know, in uh, Europe or US, I think you know better in the sense uh, hardly, you know, maybe 12 to 10 to 12 percent only go after high school to, you know, do higher studies right. and and that I think we have to uh, consolidate in the right. sense after plus two. These people can have all this, uh, you know, uh, technical training. See, uh, there's vocation. a confusion. There's a confusion. Yeah. Our HRD thinks that uh, literacy equals education. Yeah. But that's a mistake. Correct. Because we've had an old oral tradition. Correct. The, the Trikhan in uh, Punjab, in yeah. my village, Ludhiana, correct. Uh, he may not know how to read write, but correct. he's a very good carpenter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, very uh, correct. So, so many trades, you don't need to be formally educated yes. in the cl classical sense of the term. I am 100% You're okay. you highly educated in your skill. Correct. See, literacy is equated to education. Yes. Education is wrongly equated to culture. All three are wrong. Right. Right. All three are, you can be educated, uncultured. Yes. You can be literate, uh, uneducated. And no. educated in one mm. thing may not mean educated in another thing. So, no, person not to be educated what matters to him. Correct. He could be educated in the skill. Yeah. So, he could be a crane operator, he could be a driver. He Very could be, correct. He could cook, he could be Very a, correct. a hairstylist. All these in place like Delhi yeah. command good salaries. Correct. Uh, and he does not have to have some official degrees. The point I want to stress is these are not fully captured in our database. Right. So we tend to think that people are unemployed. 
Right. People are not actually. So Second is a, yeah. agriculture. One point I want yeah. to stress. Everybody is going on chanting. You know, seventy percent of our no, seventy percent is rural is not agriculture. Mm. According to me, something like forty forty five percent of rural only is involved in agriculture. All others are involved in so many other ancillary activities today. Yeah, I mean, there's a there, there, there are people doing all kind of village services. Yes, yes. And they're not, they're not all farmers. Who repair repair work, motor repair work, water work, and so many other associated work they are doing actually. They are not in agriculture. Right, right. So that is also growing, and these have to be captured, which is not done adequately. Second is large number of big companies today. They are going for what is called outsourcing. Suppose you buy a refrigerator or a television. You after some time you want it to be serviced or some repair work. You ring up. Nobody from company will come to you. They have fixed some agency who will send two boys to uh, you know get into the problem of your uh, uh, you know water cooler. So this is all decentralized service. Completely Very decentralized. These are all outsourced, yeah. and those boys will come running and they will do something anyhow and then yeah. take the yeah. uh, you know what is known as the service charges and other thing right same thing about your uh, car and other thing this you know car or scooter you go and that everything is outsourced yeah. and these youngsters are not fully captured again yeah. so if you ask the company how many people you are employed he will say something like 800 people but actually something like 10000 are Associated in all these activities. Not on his payroll. Point. Not on his but payroll. But as independent workers. Yes, they don't want to have also on their payroll because all the other issues will be there, you know. Yeah, yeah. You have to give them uniform, you have to have provident fund and then maternity leave. And nobody wants to. Yeah. Most of the companies are outsourcing as much as possible. So people negotiate their own terms much better than the labor laws are requiring people to do. Very correct. It's a better that people negotiate each other. Yeah. They're smart guys. And also, of course, it's a, it's an incentive to senior executives. Because many of the outsourced companies are run by their unmarried mother. Unmarried mother-in-law is not a good term, right? Unmarried sister-in-law or somebody. He runs the uh, the outsourced <laughs> agencies actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not something. So that way, they get some extra compensation, yeah, which yeah. is not again, uh, you know, taxable or anything directly. So let's say we accept this premise that government data and government formally educated, uh, formally organized economy is not Correct. a good parameter. Yes. So now that we have this very uh, loosely, loose economy going on with a lot of things happening, what is your sense of where are the real strong things in this economy? Where is going to be the next five, ten years of growth and sustainability and prosperity? in our country is it from the service sector service sector only is going to we are we are of course going on talking about manufacturing and other thing that's not going to be you don't one. think so i don't think you so don't because think make in india will succeed make in india will succeed to some extent not to you see the reason is some of the futuristic investment we have to make huge amount of investment it's one thing easy to say that you know we should do that we should do that you know the amount of investment which they are talking about you know in billions and billions of dollars and uh, our Indian companies, if you, they will talk about some, you know, couple of thousand crore. Those are pocket money for them. So that is the important issue. The amount of investment which private corporate is doing in Japan or US, and it's not very easy to, you know, uh, immediately jump into that or something. Yeah. What we can do is we can innovate in the service sector and lot of, I think, IT uh, related activities will be there in terms of integrating the the well, already for instance uh, uh, i know i uh, my plumber is earning much much more for the simple reason he has got a mobile phone the earlier model used to be he used to people used to go to his home and write in a register that right. uh, my house is such and such you come he will come uh, after, after lunch he will go and sleep that's all there is no other way you can reach him today it is not like that he is 24 hour on call he says sir my earnings have gone up three times mm. And he has got a small, you know, board also. Uh, Manju plumber contact. He has got some <laughs> ten-digit return in some uh, wall or something. Right. So what I am telling is, this is facilitating significant amount of one in what in economic jargon is called, uh, what one can call information asymmetry is getting completely down. Mm. It's this is available to all this actually. So this is, uh, this is this is what will happen actually. Yeah. We will become more and more. Uh, 
tech integrated economy very good yes. that is very good rather than official inst uh, government institution integrated yeah yeah the technology is the integrating network yes. network yes so in the in the next episode uh, i would like to talk about uh, particularly the the demonetization and about the gst and about china so uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll be back with another episode Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here and also hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified. To donate, please click this button.